The following program, Normal Show Live, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate for the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate or encourage any illegal activity and advise all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws by visiting normal.org, N-O-R-M-L dot org. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers of Normal Show Live are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of Normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to think and decriminalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... We love the earth. Normal Show Live! Marijuana Nation! Now, here's your host... Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belleville. Good afternoon, Tokers and Tokats, and welcome. It is Tuesday, October 18th, 2011, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Welcome to the show. We're having all sorts of interesting things happening here at Roller J Studios. I just got to meet, uh, well, once again, uh, some folks that I met in Joplin, Missouri at the Cannabis Revival out there. They are moving out here to Portland, Oregon, and uh, while they were in town, they wanted to start stop by and see the studios so we said hi they're on their way and uh, we'll probably be back after the show so uh glad to meet more folks making their way out west uh, i guess we're kind of the harriet tubman of uh, cannabis uh, refugees the uh, underground railroad as it were also joining us from our virtual studio in beautiful grass Doria, oregon is my good friend and half half sister cannabis carrie Hello. Ooh, she whooshed right in. <laughs> That's my news thing. Awesome. <laughs> Thought I'd change things up a little bit. Yeah. So uh, they're not in the studio now. Not they in left. The, not in the studio now. They had with them a three-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl. And I Aww. learned something today is that you cannot have a three-year-old boy in a normal studio. It just will not work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they decided to go eat lunch, and then they'll be back a little bit later. Sweet, so, yeah, it is the uh, underground uh, green railroad. There we go. I like that. Well, Cannabis Carry brings us our hemp headlines right here at the top of the show. So, what do we got in the news today? Well, today, uh, you know, K2 just keeps sneaking up in our newscast. I can't help it. We're going to talk about a K2 issue coming from the South. Also, uh, a young man in LA gets busted for. Uh, smuggling. We're also going to go to uh, talk about the GOP governor debate, or excuse me, presidential candidate debate, and uh, what Gary Johnson had to say about that Gallup poll yesterday. But we're going to start off today's hemp headlines with a celebrity bust. All right, more of that stuff. I'm sure we'll have more of that with uh, Steve Bloom, too, from Celeb Stoner when we talk to him on Friday. Uh, We'll get to that in our hemp headlines. Thanks, Carrie. Also on today's show, it's Electric Tuesday. Now, I got a text from Cannabis Cure UK. He was on a plane on his way back to uh, the old England, so he's unable to produce a song for us today. So I brought you one. This one's going to be coming from Time Warrior, a song called Time Techno 2, parentheses, Marijuana. So we'll get to see that in our Electric Tuesday tune. And then normally we'd have Todd's Toker topics, but Todd's unable to join us today. So in his place, I'm bringing back an interview from the archives. Miko Hester Perez, who is treating her son Joey uh, with uh, cannabis for his autism. A very controversial move, but uh, we'll talk about that. It's an interview from 2009, and I'll give you some updates after the interview. I found a couple of very funny videos on the web from President Obama. You won't believe at the end. A little time for a radical rant on fleecing the patients, something learned from yesterday's episode of A Different View. All that and more coming up on Normal Show Live. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that gives us these precious rights. 
Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. You are listening to Pod Safe Music. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. Hip-hop artist Soldier Boy, who began his career as a teenager, just turned 21. Well, he also was just busted with marijuana. Soldier Boy, whose real name is DeAndre Cortez Way, was arrested this morning by Temple, Georgia police officers who stopped the Escalade that he was riding in with four other men near the Alabama border. During the stop, the police found what they are calling a substantial amount of marijuana and cash in the vehicle. And all five men were arrested. An investigation is underway because they also found guns inside the car. With the weapons in the car... (laughs) All five men were charged with possession of marijuana, possession with intent to distribute, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. The Escalade that the men were stopped in was uh, a driving service, and the driver that works for the company that owns the car was also arrested. Less than an hour ago, the Georgia police released more information, and we now know that there was less than 50000 in cash and just over five ounces of marijuana. Also in the car... A puppy. Officials were nice, though, and called the driver's sister to come pick it up rather than put that little guy behind bars as well. Now, they just announced within the last hour that his bell will be set at $10,000, so he will be released very soon if he hasn't already been so. Yeah, there was a little bit, little bit of Soldier Boy there in the background. So Soldier Boy got busted uh, in the Escalade. Now, is this one of them situations, Carrie, where they roll up and uh, it's you know hot box like Cheech and Chong's van? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> you know, it's really weird. They've just been releasing, like, leaking out little details. It seems like uh, the driver was pulled over for a traffic infection, uh, possibly uh, speeding. And uh, we don't know how they found the marijuana, if he gave them a consent to search the vehicle or just gave it up. You know, what often happens, it was 3.15 in the morning, I'll tell you that. Yeah. What often happens when there's more than uh, one person in the car, they split everybody up and someone cracks under the pressure. Sure, sure. All right, well, we'll follow up on this uh, in our Celeb Stoner Report on Friday when we talk to Steve Bloom. <laughs> And also, yesterday, we told you about that new Gallup poll that showed that 50% of Americans support legalizing cannabis. Well, Republican presidential candidate Gary Johnson has come out today to decry his fellow candidates about their silence on the issue. In a statement today, the former New Mexico governor asked where the political leadership was that reflected a common sense belief. Johnson points out that 50% of Americans supporting an issue where 0% of the elected officials will publicly agree with them is baffling. He asked the question, quote, With 50% of Americans open to the idea of legalization, why won't the ruling class at least let us have the conversation? Support to legalize marijuana has been steadily growing since they began asking that question. Back in 2006, only 36% of Americans answered yes to the question about supporting legalizing marijuana. Johnson has remarked that marijuana consumers are the largest untapped voting bloc. He has not changed his stance about supporting cannabis law reform. He came out publicly for marijuana legalization back in 1999 as the governor of New 
New Mexico. Johnson has been excluded to tonight's GOP debate with candidates that will be held in Las Vegas. And other than a possible medical marijuana question, there will most likely be no time spent on our particular issue. Yeah, as usual, they don't want to address this issue because they're on the wrong side of it. 50% of Americans support, 46% of Americans oppose the legalization of marijuana. We are on the majority side now. And I broke this down yesterday after, you know, getting the post up and getting the show done. I was able to look deeper into the numbers. They've done a pretty detailed demographic look at these numbers since uh, 2005. This has been asked on uh, the uh, Gallup poll since 2005 and then 2009, 2010 and 2011. They've repeated this. And uh, it's amazing when you look at the breakdown by demographics, every de demographic surveyed, every single one of them. The support, for, the support for marijuana legalization has gone up since 2005. Among men, up 14 points. Among women, up 14 points. Among the youth, up 23 points. 30 to 49 middle-aged folks, up 17 points. Uh, 50 to 64-year-olds, up 12 points. Even folks 65 and older, it's up 4 points in support for marijuana legalization. Support is up uh, 16 points among Democrats, 11 points among independents. And even among GOP, among Republicans, support for marijuana legalization has risen 14 points since 2005. It's up six points among liberals, 22 points among moderates, and even up 10 points among conservatives. And when we look geographically, support for marijuana legalization is up 15 points in the West, 22 points in the Midwest, nine points in the South, and 11 points in the East. Everywhere you look, everybody you ask, every age group, every voting demographic, male or female, Everybody increasingly supports marijuana legalization. On Monday, charges were brought against the son of a former Los Angeles fire chief for bribing a federal officer to help him smuggle marijuana. Millage Peaks the Fourth smuggled marijuana past security on nine separate trips to the Los Angeles International Airport with the help of a Federal Transportation Security Administration officer. Peaks admitted to the FBI agents that he and some associates made trips through the airport with the marijuana after paying the TS TSA officer five to six thousand dollars in bribes also arrested was tsa officer diane perez who was arrested on charges of accepting a bribe on sunday following what was to be peak's most recent attempt but this time around a baggage handler smelled the marijuana in the luggage and alerted authorities who found 14 pounds of marijuana in peak's luggage authorities have a fairly complete picture of the crime after the interview with peaks according to the fbi affidavit peaks bought the marijuana for thirty eight thousand dollars in the bay area then drove to L.A. to make a 7.25 a.m. trip to Boston, where investigators believe he intended to resell the marijuana. Diane Perez, the 28-year-old TSA agent, was paid about $500 per bag. He would meet her outside the terminal where he would hand her his checked luggage, then she would take them into a TSA screening room. Peek told authorities that Perez instructed him how to pack his bags to avoid detection. Text messages were also recovered from a cell phone that Peek handed over to FBI agents that implicate them both in the crime. Peek, whose father retired as the chief of the Los Angeles Fire Department earlier this year, also has a sister who is an LAX police officer officer. Diane Perez has been a TSA baggage screener for the past seven and a half years. They were both released on $20,000 bail bonds on Monday night, and they will both be facing up to 15 years in prison. All right, look, I'm a guy who flies uh, about once a month, okay? And if I may steal a line from Ngaio Bielum, when I'm flying, I'm worried about whether the next guy to me has a bomb. I'm not worried if he has the bomb, okay? If he's smuggling weed, he got weed on him, man. That's not what I'm wor what TSA should be worrying about. Let's not have them taking their eyes off of terrorism and the potential for smuggling weapons or explosives here to be catching guys with weed and boo on that uh, TSA officer, that baggage handler uh, who smelled the weed and, and alerted people, man. Just let that go on by. If you've, if you've uh, examined it uh, for bombs, for explosives, and there's no problems there, let it go on by. Nobody really wants this uh, this prohibition in existence anyway. Here we are, you know, trying to catch this guy. You know, I got to take my shoes off every time I fly, take my belt off, and, uh, and, and we're worried about this guy smuggling weed. And furthermore, it just goes to show you, here we're talking about an airport, right, where some of the highest level of security we have in America, and yet 
obviously weed is getting through airports, right? This guy did what nine times bribes of five to six thousand dollars a bribe. As long as the money exists in marijuana, somebody will profit from smuggling it. And the thing is, the prohibition of marijuana, the prohibition of drugs in general, has generally led to two things more potent drugs and cheaper drugs, with one exception, and that's marijuana. The price of all drugs in price per pure gram, when you're talking about heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, and crack, have all become cheaper by factors of 20 to 80 percent, and have all become more pure by factors of 50 to 200 percent, except marijuana. While marijuana's potency in seizures has just about doubled, its price has also just about doubled in, in adjusted dollars since 1981. In 30 years, what we've proven successful at by keeping a prohibition on marijuana is keeping its price high. And when we keep its price high, that maintains the profit level necessary for people to be smuggling it, for people to be bribing people with it, and for those Mexican cartels to fund all their other terrible, dirty operations. And this is something that the DEA drug warriors don't even show shy away from. They'll tell you right to your face that, well, if we legalized marijuana, the price would come way down. A as if that would be a bad thing in America. And we told you yesterday, although it was an hour two, about the 19-year-old athlete that collapsed and died of acute organ failure due to toxicity after smoking what is being called synthetic marijuana. We also reported earlier this month on the 5,000 calls to poison control centers last year related to synthetic marijuana. The substance most marketed, mostly marketed as K2 or Spice has been banned in many states and counties across the nation. Alabama is the latest state to allow, outlaw the sale and possession of synthetic marijuana. The governor ordered it to be removed from store shelves as a public health hazard, and he signed that executive order on Friday that banned the sale of chemically treated herbal products. And with the help of the Alabama Alcoholic Beverage Control Board, they began pulling it off store shelves where the owners had yet to comply. State agents seized about $3.9 million worth of the product by Monday, which is probably a much closer estimate of the value than the real marijuana bus we report on since they could just add up all the little price tags on the packages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the that's the difference there. You, know? you always love it when we hear these uh, bus stories about uh, marijuana. When they seize the marijuana from the illegal growers, you know, they go out in the forest and they chop down, you know, plants that aren't even mature and they'll say, well, this, we got $5 million worth of marijuana here. You know, assuming that every plant would grow to its full potential and it would all be sold, broke down into eighths and quarters and ounces, uh, they extrapolate that it would be $5 million. You know, not considering that a lot of those plants might be lost to critters in the forest eating the buds, to crop failures, to, to bugs, to, to thieves, to ripoffs, whatever. But, but when it's our medical marijuana patients who get their medicine seized from them, by the police, and then they go and sue those police to try to get their plants back. Oh, well, gee, they were just these little seedlings. Those aren't worth that much, <laughs> right? That's kind of the way it goes when they talk about these seizures. But when we talk about the, the K2 seizures, well, there's a product that's right there on the shelf. You can just add up all the little price tags for it. You know, instead of wasting all of this money going after K2, and, and all of this problem, and, and again, we've said many times, this K2 stuff, this spy stuff, is not to be messed around with. It's a synthetic chemical, right? It is not cannabis. It is not extracted from cannabis. It's not converted from cannabis. It's a synthetic chemical designed to mimic, in a very extreme way, the effects of cannabis in activating the cannabinoid receptors in the human body. It's meant for laboratory work when you have to have, you know, a super amount of this effect in a short time so that you can you know, have the time to be able to study it. It's not meant for human consumption. If you're out there listening to this and you're thinking about using K2, using Spice, it doesn't show up on the drug test, you just want to get high, realizing, realize that you're messing around with something that was never intended for human beings to ingest and is very, can be very potent and very variant in its potency uh, from product to product. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not a prohibitionist. I think adults should be able to do whatever the hell they want. I would just urge you to use extreme caution. Start with, you know, use little tiny bits. If that's something you try, then always 
please be very, very careful with it. Because of prohibition, we have to be ultra careful. We don't have the laws that are going to protect the purity of the product, the potency of the product. Make sure that we get, we're get we safe when we use it. Of course, my advice, stick to the natural herb the, 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 that nature brought us that has not killed a single human being in 5,000 years. That's what we should be using here. All right, folks, we got to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have some daily toker tunes for you for Electric Tuesday from Time Warrior. Right back after this. Enjoy your 420. It's 20 after the hour. And we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man, a reefer man? If he said he swam to China, he would scare the You know you're talking to that reefer man. Starfish Designs, makers of the original Gandalf. I'm Radical Russ, and when I want to relax, I always have my 17-inch long original Gandalf from Starfish Designs nearby. The hand-blown borosilicate glass is strong and easy to clean, and the design is sleek and sophisticated. Starfish designs are available from Bend, Oregon at a glass retailer near you. For locations, call 541-788-GLASS. That's 541-788-4527. Most of us pirates, we go on vacation to North Dakota, you know, because they've got a town called Argusville. Ar -ar -ar -ar. What are you smoking there, boy? Are you or is someone you know a marijuana smoker? Have you or is someone in your family been arrested for a marijuana violation? Truth of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws is the most comprehensive source of information regarding marijuana and its effects on health as well as legal issues. Normal even offers a database of lawyers specializing in cannabis in your area. Normal, the nation's largest and most successful marijuana law reform organization, has spent decades gathering the knowledge and science on everything related to cannabis. Normal is the best resource to find out the truth about marijuana, connect with a lawyer in your area, or help find an end to prohibition. Information is available at normal.org, that's N-O-R-M-L dot org, or toll free at 888-67-NORMAL. Okay, class, repeat after me. Am I free to go, officer? I don't consent to any searches, officer. I wish to speak to my attorney before answering any questions, officer. These three phrases may help your attorney keep your ass out of a jail cell someday. So memorize them and use them. It's time for your daily toker tunes. The best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today we bring you tunes for Electric Tuesday, our segment featuring the best of modern electric music in the genres of dance, new age, house, and experimental. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tunes. All right, for today's Daily Toker Tunes, like I said earlier, Cannabis Cure UK is on his way back to the UK, so I'm handling Electric Tuesday duties today. Uh, we've got a song here for, for you from Time Warrior. I wasn't able to find any information about him from MusicAlley.com, but this song is called Time Techno 2, parentheses marijuana, and I figure it'll do just as well as anything else for an Electric Tuesday. Thanks. We'll be right back after this with some uh, video and uh, interview from our archives with Miko Hester Perez on using cannabis to treat childhood autism.
Copy of that song for your iPod? Check out the Daily Toker tunes at the Stash blog by surfing to stash.normal.org and choosing media and then Toker tunes from the main menu. Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place? Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook rolls all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history. Profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. What makes something funny? How does humor impact health and psychological well-being? How can you incorporate humor into everyday life? A concise, reader-friendly introduction to an important but often underappreciated topic in modern psychology, Humor 101 explains the role of comedy, jokes, and wit in the sciences and discusses why they are so important to understand. Psychology professor Dr. Mitch Earlywine draws from his personal experiences in stand-up comedy to focus on how humor can regulate emotion, reduce anxiety, and diffuse tense situations, expose pretensions, build personal relationships, and much more. He irreverently debunks the pseudoscience on the topic of humor and leaves readers not only funnier, but better informed. It's part of the Psych 101 series from Springer Publishing, Humor 101, by Dr. Mitch Earlywine, Ph.D. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Now, normally we'd have Todd's Toker Topics right here, but Todd was unable to make it in today. But that doesn't mean we're going to leave you without some comedy. I found these videos on a website called Obamasnippets.com. It kind of rem reminds me of the days we used to uh, do mixing of voices, uh, uh, political voices with songs and, and make them say silly things. But here's a Obama on acid and Obama legalizes weed from Obamasnippets.com for your Tuesday laughs. Uh, enjoy. 
I'm wondering, sir, if you believe that your health is in danger at this point as a result of this election? Well, you know, I think that over the last two years, I've been slipping into a depression. Uh, but uh, I'm doing a whole lot of prescription drugs, uh, and uh, you know, I drink constantly to make me feel better. Uh, so, you know, the question is, is how do I, you know, have that opportunity to get wasted on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, now, I, I'm not recommending for every future president to drop acid like I did two hours ago, uh, because the, you know, the responsibilities of this office are so enormous. And in the rush, uh, sometimes uh, we lose track of uh, you know, the, you know, uh, gosh, I, I just peaked at this incredible high. So with that, uh, let me take a peek. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. I mean, you've got a pretty sweet butt. I'm just going to be looking forward to getting out of here in 2012. I did some talking, but mostly I did a lot of drinking. That's Obamasnippets.com. Let's take a look at another one here. Obama legalizes weed from Obamasnippets.com. For decades, we've talked about the importance of ending our dependence on foreign drugs. And there is perhaps no industry with more potential to create jobs now and growth in the coming years than the marijuana industry. That's why I signed an executive order legalizing possession and making a historic commitment to produce a revolutionary new type of clean, homegrown American hybrid pot plant, the largest such plant in the world. This will mean hundreds of thousands of new American jobs where small businesses can flourish and entrepreneurs can plant new seeds of growth. It gives rural communities and farmers the opportunity to generate new income. And above all, millions of Americans will finally be able to purchase quality, affordable ganja and the peace of mind that comes with it. And to make weed more affordable for millions of middle class Americans seeking higher education, we are doubling funding for the federal pot grant program to help students who depend on it. And with this legislation, we will once again have the highest college graduates in the world and to tackle this challenge. I've named Snoop Dogg, a leading CEO and entrepreneur, to serve as America's first ever staff chief of joints. He is capable of providing extraordinary Snoop vision, no matter how high. Our future as a nation depends on making sure that the jobs, as well as the finest pot plants in the world, take root here in America. Thanks. I, I, I just peaked at this incredible high. I mean, you've got a pretty sweet butt. You. I'm just going to be looking forward to getting out of here in 2012. I am on a drug. It is called Charlie Sheen. That's Obamasnippets.com. You can check those videos out at Obamasnippets.com. I encourage you to share them with your friends. I had a lot of fun finding those. When we come back, we're going to have an archive interview with Miko Hester Perez Thanks. on marijuana and childhood autism. Do you want to legalize it? Call your congressman today. 202-224-3121. It's free, it's easy, and you don't even have to give your name. Just your zip code, and they'll hook you up to your congressman. Call 202-224-3121 and tell Congress you support marijuana legalization. Liberate your mind. Liberate your mind. Liberate your mind. Liberate your mind. That's what you got to do.
This is Dean Becker, producer of the Drug Truth Network program Century of Lies and Cultural Baggage, which are broadcast on the normal network every Monday at 6 p.m. Each week, we open up this can of worms and go fishing for truth. Please check out our hundreds of shows featuring the words of congressmen, scientists, doctors, lawyers, authors, prisoners, patients, and providers. Available at drugtruth.net. Legalization. Decriminalization. Lowest law enforcement priority. Medical marijuana. Ganja sacrament. Consumer cannabis. Industrial hemp. The world of marijuana law reform involves many different aspects of cannabis that interact nearly every public policy discussion in America, including health care, the economy, global climate change, law enforcement and prisons, immigration, religion, free speech, energy policy, and war. Now, we take a look at how re-legalizing marijuana will change the world in our normal show live, Cannabis Conversations. All right, we go back to the archives for this next interview from 2009, Miko Hester Perez. Uh, One of the areas we've been looking at with medical marijuana has to do with the controversial use of medical marijuana for children, even in the states that have approved medical marijuana. Joining me here to talk about this situation is Miko Hester Perez. She's with the Foundation. You can learn more about them at uf4a.org. That's uf, the number four, a.org. Miko, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Well, you've been uh, all over the media lately. We've seen you with Diane Sawyer and some other folks uh, talking about this controversial use of medical marijuana for autism. And uh, this is a this is big news uh, in that autism affects many many people. We've seen the rates of autism, you know, skyrocket over the past couple of decades. So maybe you could give us just a little bit of background. How has uh, autism affected you in your life, and why did you turn to medical marijuana? Uh, well, a- autism, when my son was diagnosed at 16 months, um, I, I, had, I, I knew very little about autism. Um, and thank God that I was a researcher by trade. And I went ahead and, and I researched um, the, the, the many, um, I guess, facets or variables of, of the whole spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um, and my son was diagnosed with severe autism. And he's nonverbal. And he, just like most children in the spectrum, he was a very picky eater. Okay. Um, and I was able to, um, you know, I, I'm, I was very intuitive with my son, first of all. So I, I, I kind of knew what was going to work and what was not going to work. And at the age of five, he was prescribed um, certain medications to um, get, ha- get in control of his behavior. I mean, living with Joey um, when he was five years old was very, very difficult in our home. How so? Um, I, was been, I, I was single. I was a single mother with two children. Mm-hmm. And I was getting a crash course in uh, the autism, uh, dealing with regional centers, dealing with school districts, um, dealing with the politics of autism. Mm-hmm. And I got um, with a, a, a psychiatrist that had no problem uh, prescribing my son certain medications that uh, you and I, uh, as adults, would think were very harmful. Mm-hmm. So um, then, you know, I went ahead um, with uh, the medications, and as a result, um, at the age of 10, um, he was diagnosed with anorexia and malnutrition. So in addition to the uh, the problems with eating, what other ways did the autism manifest for your son? Was he was he acting out violent, have problems with uh, 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 emotional control? What? Kind of describe that for us. Yes, um, the aggression. My, my ah. son always felt like he was on the edge. Mm-hmm. Um, he always felt like he was one step from being um, unstable. He was, he was extremely unstable. I mean, we had I had multiple um, crisis units in my home. I had behavioral direct intervention. Um, We were all working together um, to figure out how to control his behavior. Um, At one point, my son would, would run out of our home. Um, the door would be open. He would just he would dart out into the street. Oh my. He would, um, yeah. It, I mean, things that a single mom, you know, I, I'm trying to, to to hold down the home, mm. and I had a son that clearly um, was in you know dire straits. And I 
I think that they prescribed medication. Looking back, I think that they did more harm than good. Oh, my. So all sorts of conventional pharmaceuticals you tried on this uh, may have caused more harm than good. Was was he harming himself as well? Was there any sort of violent, uh, you know, to himself? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, he would bang his um, head. He would uh, bang the walls. He would throw things. He would uh, just just like outbursts, okay. uh, as a crying outburst. And, 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 you know, my daughter and I would have to duck and cover. Mm. You know, it, it was clearly a, a, a very, very um, unpredictable state we were in. And we, we were just doing the best that we could to maintain. Well, I, I, I can um, imagine you, know, you I, must have felt overwhelmed and frightened and, and, and worried about your son to no end. And did these pharmaceutical remedies, you say they caused more harm than good. Uh, they didn't do anything to alleviate these symptoms? You know, in the beginning, and, and I, you know, looking back, maybe the first year, um, but he's five years old. He's a growing boy. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first year, um, we were experimenting with these class four medications, and I believe the law enforcement calls them narcotics. Mm -hmm. um, we were dealing with medications that if you split in half, we would go to jail. Wow. So, <laughs> um, it, it, <sighs> didn't really, really hit me until this year, the, the damage that I, I don't think, I, I can't blame myself. Um, I, I, I blame um, a community that settled with, um, with giving their children, um, I, I, there, there's a whole protocol of these medications. Sure. So, and, um, well, so, the, so these medications aren't working like you would want them to, and I imagine at this point you're probably at your wit's end and you're worried about your child, and then you turn to medical cannabis. What, what led you to medical cannabis, and were you resistant to the idea at first? Well, um, considering my son was uh, 48 pounds and he was not a candidate for a feeding tube and um, the medical community, certain pediatricians um, could not give me any answers, um, what was a thought, and I, you know, I, I just thought about it. I said, you know, marijuana, mar you know, and I said, and you know what, I couldn't possibly be the only parent who has, you know, who's about to go online and do search logic for autism and medical marijuana. And as soon as I did that, um, a very well-known doctor in the autism community, his findings came up, Dr. Bernard Wimlin, and his whole protocol is dietary. And in his findings, he says um, how this is a healthy alternative to the farm to the synthetic pharmaceuticals for our children. Hmm. And he goes on and on and on about you know being a responsible parent and and and, and following um, this this type of protocol. And mind you, I had exhausted all other treatments. Sure. And with autism, you know, each child has a different genetic makeup. So what works with mine may not work with, you know, another child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was clearly at the end. And, and this was, you know, we were 13 and to um, finding um, an alternative. Hmm. So how long ago did you start this new uh, cannabis therapy and what was it like on the first day? Well, the, the, we started seven months ago, and the first day, um, within the first hour, um, it was almost nothing short of a miracle. Um, my son has repetitive behaviors. He would go to the refrigerator multiple times, and all of a sudden, he just wanted to sit in his room and play with his toys. We were sitting in the living room, and the, it was quiet in our home. Hmm. And we just stood there, you know, my husband and I, and we said, you know, we're not going to go check on Joey because we've never heard our house be this quiet before. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got up and I peeked in on him, and he he was sitting there playing peaceful. Um, he was calm. And, you know, a lot of people say, or I've heard um, from a previous doctor that, you know, he was stoned. Well, Joey has a different immune system than the average person due to autism. Mm -hmm. um, the autism attacks um, the, the immune system. And so you and I would be high. Joey, for some reason, it, it balanced him out. It was the the, the medication. Um, it, it it was it was a miracle. You know, it was a miracle. I, I, that's to what we 
see in kids that have uh, ADD or ADHD where we give them synthetic speed like Ritalin where it would be speed to you right. and me, but for them, it just balances them out. Right. Um, I'm gonna, uh, yeah. 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 Very and, interesting. And I believe that's what the marijuana did for him. The synthetic, we, believe me, I, we've tried um, Ritalin. And my son, as a result of those 13 medications, um, liver damage. Yeah. Um, uh, facial tics. My son is seizures, having seizures. Wow. Um, all of these things from these 13 medications, but the one that, that is the most um, evident was my son was dying. I was, I had, um, it seems like once I was able to prove my case to his psychiatrist, the very next day I was on the phone calling a, a medical marijuana doctor who was willing to take Joey on. I, I think I, I went through at least a, a, a dozen dispensaries um, trying to get to a, a doctor that would understand what I was going through. So it's been seven months now that you've been uh, using this. Uh, what's what's it been like for your son now? Has he gained the weight back? How's his health? He is 38 pounds heavier. Wow. Um, and that's in, that's in about six and a half months. Um, hmm. He's gained um, 38 pounds. It's well proportioned. Um, his his well being and health uh, have not been compromised. He is happy. He's healthy. He's he's. It's almost like an awakening. And and I'm not sure if it you know refers back to um, one uh, a movie. Um, uh, God, I forgot the actor's name. Is but one it, with it, Robert it, De Niro in that it, one? Robin 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 um, Williams and Robert De Niro in that one movie. I, I think yes. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, my son has. It, it, it's an awakening for him. I mean, he was nonverbal and never even attempted to speak. Um, now I have a one-year-old, and he's mimicking the one-year-old. Wow. Yeah. This, I mean, this clearly um, whatever research that that needs to be conducted, or or if research is being conducted, Joey is already the re- the, the result. Mm. Wow, that we need to do more study on this because it's it's such a m- miraculous story. But it is laden with a lot of controversy. A lot of people uh, fear this notion of giving medical marijuana to children. What has been some of the backlash that you've received since you've gone public with this and, and talked about it in the media? Oddly enough, the backlash is from parents and other people who have a child diagnosed with autism. The autism community, I, I mean, after the Good Morning America interview, I had received over 300 emails statewide from parents saying, thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you for being our voice. Thank you for taking people into our home to see what we have to deal with. Thank you for exposing the uh, uh, prescribed drugs that we're giving to our three-year-old. Um, and and, and, most, and, and, and it, it doesn't bother me that um, you know, I am getting backlash from, from a few people because I want to be able to prove and I want to be able to show them that it, it, this is marijuana is not, um, marijuana has improved the quality of my son's life. You know, I had, I had a mother email me from Texas and say that she was going through exactly the same thing I was going through except her son died. Mm-hmm. After reading that email, I knew that it was my purpose and, and to, um, you know, go around statewide and help these mothers um, with the, the Compassionate Youth Act. Wow. It's it's an amazing story, and I know you're working with this group, Unconventional Foundation for Autism, at uf4a.org. What are your plans with that group? How, how do you plan to spread this message? I plan to um, to go to 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 the states that aren't um, the, the states that do not have the Compassionate Youth Act. Um, I plan to go to these states, speak with legislators, speak with parents, um, get everyone, including the pharmaceutical companies, including um, the highest level in, 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 in science and research and with government, and to um, make uh, medical marijuana an option for our children. Um, I, I, I'm not going to settle for another parent sending me an email saying that their son or their child had passed away because we did not acknowledge the Compassionate Youth Act of Mer- Medical Marijuana. Here, here. You are an amazing and brave woman, Miko Hester Perez, uh, dealing with autism in an unconventional way, but uh, probably the best way you've found so far, and, and I, I truly hope that your message gets out to so many people out there. I, I personally have two friends, uh, a married couple, who have a, a son with autism, 
it's not extremely severe autism, but I do have some awareness of what you're going through. So uh, I applaud you and thank you so much for joining us on the show and, and helping other thank people you. learn about this. Thank you. All right, guys, here we go. We've got the top six answers are on the board. Name something that gets passed around. Chris. A joint. A joint. <laughs> This is Normal Show Live, where a joint is always the right answer. Now, Chris, I don't know what hundred people you thought we were talking to at some nice little mall across good old America. But I'm pretty sure the people didn't tell the survey people, hey, an illegal drug. <laughs> Let's turn around and see how many weed heads are out there with Chris. A joint! Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. You want answers? I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore! You want answers? You have offended I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical all right, welcome back. Uh, you know, we've got all sorts of great shows here on the Normal Network. And uh, last night we had a new live episode of A Different View. This is the uh, show featuring the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act campaign manager, Jennifer Alexander, as well as Alternative Medical Choices clinic owner, Iva Cunningham, and Moms for Marijuana's Sarah Frank. And their guest on yesterday's show was Lori Duckworth, the executive director of Southern Oregon Normal. I was engineering the show when Lori was asked about the recent raids in Southern Oregon. And as she described the raids, she explained how the feds come down and they raid these guards gardens and they take all the plants and the the materials and any processed cannabis uh, as well as you know incidentals uh, used in producing the marijuana but also she brought up the fact that they seize these people's paperwork that is their medical marijuana cards their doctor recommendations and in many time many cases their medical records now, this really shocked Iva from Alternative Medical Choices. She runs a clinic there that helps patients get their medical marijuana cards, get their medical marijuana recommendations, and it's already been tough enough with reports of the patient roles declining drastically because of this doubling to quintupling of the medical marijuana program fees. What they have done is they have taken a fee that used to be $100 a year for protection money from the state and doubled that to $200 per year. Now, remember... This 100 previously and 200 currently that we've been paying the state is for a card, just for a card in our wallet that protects us from arrest. I'll show you. I've got uh, one of these of my own here. And, uh, you know, this card here uh, costs about $200 now. This, this little scrap of paper is $200. Now, realize 
That $200 is just the cost of the people that have to work there for the state government to process all of those applications, the cost of printing the cards, and the cost of maintaining the 24-hour uh, uh, database for access to find out you know, whether someone's a legitimate patient or a legitimate growth site. It obviously does not cost $100 uh, per all of those expenses to get that card. In fact, there has been a surplus in the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program every year that it has run. So it costs far less to maintain the program than the $100 they were originally charging us. So now they've doubled it to $200. And of course, this is just a brazen uh, move to siphon money and to balance the budgets of, of health care and balance other budgets in the state on the backs of the sick and disabled patients because they're using an unpopular medicine. Well, in addition to these fees being raised, there has been an addition of a new fee of $100 for a replacement card. Now, it used to be that if you lost your card, you could just order a new one from the state. And since we are just talking about a little scrap of paper, it's a negligible cost, especially to a program that is currently running a surplus, uh, seem uh, arbitrary and, uh, and exorbitant to charge people $100 just to get a little replacement piece of paper. Now, take this back to what Lori was saying from Southern Oregon Normal. When the feds come, they take all these people's paperwork. They take their cards. So what we have here are the feds cooperating in a, in a manner with the state in a, in a way to discourage people from signing up for these cards. Because once they're rated, it's going to cost them another $100 to go get their replacement card. Now, in addition to that, there's a fee added on that did not used to exist of $50 to register your growth site. So let's suppose that you're a patient obeying the law. Maybe you've got cancer or AIDS or glaucoma or something. And you have found yourself, after much effort, a grower that you trust who can produce medicine for you. Now that grower, without your knowledge, went afoul of the law and is busted. Now when that grower's busted, you have to pay a new 50 bucks to go get a new grower, though you did nothing wrong whatsoever. This is simply the state fleecing the patients and now the feds are working right along with them. What an incentive they have now to bust people knowing they will have to pay at least 100, maybe 150 bucks per to be able to get their registrations back. Now, uh, Jennifer Alexander from the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act followed up this line of questioning by asking how many people were affected by these raids. And it was 175 people were affected by these raids. Now, if each one of those 175 people have to pay $150 in order to get their new grow site registered and to get their uh, uh, their replacement card, that's a cost of $26,250. $26,000 to the state of Oregon as a benefit to have the feds come in and bust people. Can you see where we're going with this? We are setting setting ourselves up. It's been set up here in the state of Oregon where the local state officials, the local uh, of officials here, will want the feds to come in to bust people, knowing that it'll bring more money into the program with their, these renewal fees, knowing they can balance more budgets on the backs of sick and disabled people. And it's absolutely disgusting that this is going on here in the state of Oregon, where we've had uh, an exemplary program. You know, they, they want to, they, they complain about this abuse of the program. Oh my God, medical marijuana is being abused. It was only intended for 500 people and now there's 50,000. Oh my God, medical marijuana is being abused. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not being abused. It's being used properly. It is a medical choice for Oregonians. There's nowhere in the Medical Marijuana Act that says must be medicine of last resort, must have tried every single possible pill, must have gone through serious, uh, you know, terrible life-threatening uh, disorders here uh, where no other remedy could possibly work for you and then and only then will we let you have cannabis. No, it says marijuana is to be treated like other medicines. It's another choice. It doesn't matter whether something else works or not. All right, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us here at uh, Normal Show Live, Voice of the Marijuana Nation. Glad to have you here. Uh, more tokers
And we will also be taking your calls at 971-533-7111. For Cannabis Carry, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers.